everyone and welcome to my session. My name is Inubong and I'm going to be speaking to you today on how you can supercharge the server-side JavaScript with Nitro.js. Let's dive right in. Now, today's talk is going to focus on what Nitro.js is and the principles that guide Nitro.js. We're going to discuss Nitro.js key features. We are going to build a little demo to demonstrate how uh, some of the features that Nitro.js has to offer. And, how we, and we can also see how easy it is to create web servers using Nitro. We are also going to deploy our app and our server, rather. And we also will take a look at the Andres ecosystem and what's next for Nitro. About me, I'm a software engineer, a technical writer, a Nitro.js community team member. I have to generally post memes on the internet. I like to run and you can find me on GitHub and Twitter. Now, what is Nitro.js? Nitro is the universal server toolkit for creating type safe and performance universal web servers. I use universal twice, and this is just to overcome the fact that Nitro.js is runtime agnostic and the deployment provider agnostic. Nitro.js does not seek to lock you in into its um, ecosystem. It serves the greater community. So Nitro.js um, tries to be as agnostic as possible. Um, now Nitro can be used either as a standalone web server or a server, a server engine for full stack frameworks. So full stack frameworks are becoming super popular or are popular. And so Nitro.js can basically be used to power server side frameworks or full stack frameworks rather. And it's currently powering Nitro. It's currently powering Nuxt version 3, which is like the most powerful version of Nuxt and in the view ecosystem. So but for the Angular ecosystem, Nitro.js powers or is the server engine for analog JS, which is an SSR framework for the Angular ecosystem. And then for the Solid JS ecosystem, Solid uses Vinc and Vinc is built on top of Nitro. So everything is Nitro and yeah, so these are all the these are the things, these are some of the things Nitro can do. So let's talk about Nitro's principles. First one is agnostic at all costs. So Nitro.js is not affiliated with any large corporation or there is no one person behind Nitro that whose aim is to, like I said before, lock you in to the ecosystem and try to yeah force you to use a certain thing. Nitro is agnostic. It can run on any run. It can run with any runtime. So for example, Node.js, Bond, even service workers. And the aim of Nitro is to integrate, not compete. Nitro.js has an open API, which anyone can integrate with and use for their project and deploy anywhere they want. Nitro.js is not seeking to compete with um, existing tools, rather to collaborate and to with the ecosystem better. And so we also get deployment via presets. Uh, with Nitro, we can deploy to any deployment provider, cloud universal, railway, etc. All we have to do is set a preset and then Nitro also is built based off of web standards and yeah, which makes it which makes it super flexible and helps keep it agnostic. Now some of Nitro JS key features. Uh, one is zero config. You can get started with Nitro with just one command. You don't need to set up anything, you don't need to set up TypeScript, routing, hot model reloading, everything comes pre-packed out of the box. Um, Nitro also has fast system routing, so you can uh, create your API routes. All you have to do is create a file or create a file in the routes folder and then prefix it with the HTTP method and voila, your route is ready to go. Next, Nitro also has automatic imports. And so, yeah, using the unimport on JS package, Nitro auto import utilities and modules, and also keeps your code minimal and clean. It also supports tree shaking and code splitting to keep your bundle size really small. So Nitro also provides caching out of the box. Um, caching can be pain to set up. You can either set up caching on specific routes or on all your routes. And Nitro also provides customizable storage options for your caching. Then universal deployment, we had talked about this earlier. Uh, Nitro.js um, does not lock you in. You can deploy it to whatever provider you need or you want to use. And then Nitro is hackable. You can easily extend Nitro's API using its runtime hooks. So I guess it's demo time. So we, so in this demo, we are going to be building a simple to-do to-do API 
for sake of time, we would focus mainly on maybe get and post. Uh, so we'll be able to create to do's and also fetch our to do's. Yeah. So let's get started, shall we? So to get started with Nitro, I'm going to go to the Nitro JS dev website and we can get started. So if I create a new project using starter templates, I'm going to, so you can use any of the package providers or the package managers. I'll stick with fun and open up my terminal and then work. I think the L on my keyboard is a bit stuck. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to paste the command. It might take a while to set up, but yeah, any moment from now, okay. Any moment from now should be done. Okay, cool. So I'm proceeding to the projects. Forgot to rename the projects. We are stuck with Nitro Arc. I'm going to open the same code editor. Let me go ahead and resize this. Okay. When by default, like I said, everything comes pre-installed or pre-configured. So all you have to do is go straight to setting up your API routes. So in our case, so we're going to start with the post the post method let's see let's go ahead and create to do the push.cs so like i said before all you have to do to define api routes in nitro is just to the, the name of the routes and you follow with the HTTP method and then you're good to go for the calls from event handler we are going to make this a swamp okay so this is a push request. We are going to be accepting some data. We are going to accept the to-do, which is the to-do title and the completed state. So to read the body of the request, all in Nitro, all we have to say is read body, and then we're good to go. So we can add some validation. So if not to do, or if not complete it, we can return an error. Let's see. 400. Okay. So now we define our to-do list. Now, so one thing else, one thing that Nitro does provide is a storage layer. So with this storage layer, what we can do is we can, we can store data and by default, it uses, it uses memory or it uses maps in memory by default, but then we can configure it to use, so a key value pair instead. So all we have to do is to pass the key to the function. And then you see the get item to do's. And then if you don't get any to do's, we return an empty array. And so that sets a new to do. Mm -hmm. And sets the array to dates that now. And then we can set to do completed values. Okay. So then we can then push the, you can then put a new to do. Okay, so we have an error here. What we want to do now is to define our types. Let's create a users folder and then we add index DRTS, talk to functions, export QD. There's a code export type to be. There's a code to ID or string, zero or string. We want to bring boolean. Okay, so all we have to do now is to use this. Like this, so this is the purpose. All right, our type is a string. Okay, so to a string. All right, then we push our to do, and then we can then call on the storage layer. We can access it, or we can set in it to do. So to do, to do this. Okay. And then, so once this is done, you can return the status of 301. And then, data versus new to do. Then we can just return message as this to do our road success. Yeah. Okay, cool. So to test out that this works, we first of all have to run the server. Okay, I'm going there. Our server is going to run at localhost 3000. Then we can come to this postman or whatever testing tool you prefer. So let's start. Okay, so our video has been added successfully. And if we come back to our app, we should see a dot data slash kv 
file slash to do's. So this is our to do here locally. So the storage layer by default saves in, in development environment saves data in the project directory. But then we have to configure a remote KV store before we deploy it. So let's go ahead and create the get request and then we can configure can configure our remote storage option. So I mentioned earlier that a natural handle is caching for us. And then we can define you can use the defined cache event handler to define a cached event handler as the name requires. So we use it the same way, but we can but natural lets us add some extra parameters at the bottom. So let's first of all get QA storage data get item to do's, then if you know to do rooms, return touches. Oh, we can just say return 200 and then we can see data to do's. And then so to cache our function, we can add the max age to really how long should the return data be cached for until it can be validated and yeah the new data or the new data returned so we can just say one hour because this is a small app we might not exactly see the benefit of this here um but then this can be really handy when building large scale production apps we can also set some other some other values as well um can take a look at the nitro at the cache api on the nitro documentation websites so let's test out our to do dot get routes. Let's copy this. So we get our to do. Let's add another one. Request. Okay. See if we come here. Doesn't get added. Yeah. So it doesn't get added because we cached our function. So let's try removing this and see if this works now. Okay. See so this works now. Yeah. But if you go back to caching the data, it it's only going to return this until this validity expires and if you come here you'd see the dead natural output has the cache natural nitro slash handlers directory with the to do's and yeah so all of our cache data is here okay so that's this and now we have to set up our remote key storage or key value storage so let's see we are going to be deploying on versa has this Versa has a package to help handle with key value key value remote key value storage so let's install that the name of the package is um at Versa slash kv now again nitro is runtime agnostic nitro is agnostic so both runtime and for deployment providers so you know you can feel free to use whatever solution you want and then we have to we have to configure this in our nitro.config as such, storage, as you can see, we already have a bunch of presets available for the storage drivers. Well, yeah, we chose Versa because that is what we shall be deploying. And so the storage layout, you can also configure like a dev storage. Yeah, you can also configure like a dev storage, but we won't get into that in this demo. So basically the dev storage is for your development environments, configuring the storage for your development environment. By default, Nitro uses the product directory, but you can use another option. Yeah, so let's go into deploying our app. Like I mentioned earlier, we're going to use Nitro. So let's use Resell. Let's open up. First of all, we have to host, we have to set up a remote repository for our projects. So let's go to GitHub and create a repository. Not sure. What's it to so good? Okay, let me just use the command. And yeah. So everything should be here. All right. So if you go to Versal, we can add a new project. We import our projects from Versal and we deploy. One thing I may have forgot to mention. So if you want to, if you were to create like extra routes, say for getting a single to do or uh, we would do it this way so, uh, so first of all we would create a routes folder you'd create a to do's folder rather and then so we can see id yeah dot, 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 yes. 
and then we can write all of our code here to get the singular to do. Okay, so our deployment is complete. It's a dashboard. If we go to our if we go to our app, we would let's see the yeah, so the index the, the route from the index of TX returns because it's a get request and it returns this. So let's we still have to configure the remote KV storage on Versal. So Versal lets us do this really easily. I can come here and undial the project and connect this DB, which is an upstash KV. That's the one. So I can copy this and I can set my AMVs. Oh, okay. So it's automatic. It's been automatically set. And, um, I think I might have to redeploy. And then we should be able to use our to do API. Let's wait a couple of seconds. Okay. So our app is done deploying. So let's copy this and go to postman. So let's try this. Let's post dot send requests. So let's see what's the error, error connects. So let's add the to do. Okay. So something seems to be wrong with postman. So let's try making the call request. The request using the command line is dot. Let's see. All right. So this worked. That is of 201. To do edit successfully. And we can get, we can get, let's see. Let's do get requests. Instead, nobody. Yeah, so we can just see this. Yeah, quickly. Right, so we get our to do. So our endpoint works as it's expected to. So yeah, that's all for deployment and the coding session. So let's go back to our slides. So we are done with the coding and deployment session. Let's talk about the OnJS ecosystem. So the NitroJS is a part of a bigger ecosystem called OnJS stands for Unified JavaScript Tools. And so NitroJS is made up of a bunch of packages from this ecosystem. So the one, the most important one being H3. H3 is, H3 provides all the file-based routes and it's literally the powerhouse behind Nitro. And then this is on storage. On storage is used as a storage layer that Nitro you know, uses. Then it's on plugin, which is the unified plugin system for Vitz, rollup, and etc. There's O fetch for data fetching. There's on imports, and then there's web sockets and many more. So the Andreas ecosystem is made up of about 63 packages. They have about 421 million plus monthly downloads on NPM. There's over 49 key GitHub stars, 200 plus contributors, and over 5,000 commits across all of the packages in the ecosystem. So it's, the Andreas ecosystem is pretty huge and, and keeps growing um, every day. So what's next for Nitro? So Nitro V, it's on the way and it's meant to bring up some, some features such as stabilize some of the features. For example, we have web sockets, tasks, and the, the database storage layer, which are still in expert, which are still in the experimental versions. And those are going to be more stable by the release of Nitro V3. Nitro V3 also promises a smaller Apple bundle, and it also removes the search polishes that were added to be compatible with Node 18. And also doing that is going to further reduce the output bundle. And then there's also going to be an experimental with integration, which aims to improve things such as faster hot mode reloading and just a better integration in general. Natural V3 also still promises many more. These are just on the surface. And yeah, thank you very much for attending my talk. You can find NitroJS at NitroJS.dev and then the OnJS community at the GitHub slash OnJS and then the Trinity community. Positive. Thank you very much. I hope you've been able to learn a lot. Have a nice day.